just can't get a mortgage and round here the house prices are so high. Come on, baby. I haven't asked him whether he thinks I'm stupid or brave. <laughs> Any option. You've got to do it, you've got to do it. Wow. So tell me what your reaction is to this. I'm quite surprised, I'm quite liking it. Or you could get the whole section of the plane as a ready made bit of building. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what have they done? I've got some drawings, actually. Oh, as good as it gets. <laughs> How much money have you got left? Uh, let me see. No point in crying over a cardboard cottage. It's a great feeling to know that I'm standing on the land I own and I'm about to build a house and none of my friends have done that. <laughs> Tell me how you want people to feel when they walk in this space. I want them to be completely wound. We're gonna to get to a stage where we're gonna run out of money. Uh, it's as simple as that, so we have to get it within budget. So... Some bits I like, some bits I don't. That's beautiful. What about making the whole wall look like, it's like a waterfall or something? No. <laughs> How tacky that. is that? I'm going to meet Tom and Zoe, who have decided that the only way to get a house at a price they can afford is to build it themselves. It would be really nice to get our own space to actually feel like it's my house with my things. We're building a house for ourselves, you know, for our future. For the future, you know, yeah. Or the start of our future. It's doing something for us rather than anybody else. And, you know, yeah. we, that's what we've got the opportunity to do, and that's, that's our plan. We completed about six weeks ago now, and so now we own it, we can obviously get in here and start clearing it. It's a great feeling to know that I'm standing on the land I own and I'm about to build a house and none of my friends have done that. <laughs> We've been together for five years, so we wanted to get a house built. And finally to live together, so it will be fabulous to be able to get home, chuck my shoes down and sit on my own sofa having a beer in my own house. So it'll be great. Yeah. It's got to fit in with the current area. I've spoke to the planners and they've said that's really their only concern. They just want the house to just blend in and not stand out. As you come in through the front door, you're just gonna have this amazing wow factor. Modern, uh, contemporary design.
you walk through the main oak door. Fabulous kitchen, perfect lines, the tiles that we've chosen, it's all very chic. The actual size of this house is, is just over the size of a double garage, but it's, it, do, it, you know, it does everything we need it to do. This is our plot. So this will be the front door. Tell me how you want people to feel when they walk in this space. When they go through that door, what's the impression you want? I want them to be completely wowed. For me personally, I can't stand boring standard ideas. If you go through to people's houses and they're fantastic, they've got different, different ideas, everybody goes, oh, wow, it's amazing. And I would like that for myself, to know that I walk in and see that every night that I come home. So tell me why you and Tommy want to take on this project. I grew up in a, a very modest background, um, if not poor, I suppose, really. And with, with five mouths to feed has been an incredible uh, difficulty for my parents growing up. And it was always chaotic and messy. So I've always had to settle, I suppose, for, for what's there. And this is the first time that all of those feelings and emotions, I suppose, can come together and, and I can actually I can settle for what I want to settle yeah. for as opposed to what I have to. I'm really excited about this because I think we can push Zoe and Tom to bring their own individuality out through a really rich interior that belies the fact that all of the buildings here look on the outside the same. There's not too much you can do with it. At the end of the day, it's a three bedroom house, and this is what I feel is the best use of the space. We've got to make sure that we don't overspend. We can't run out of money. You know, we have to get it within budget. If you can kind of crack this issue of the small family house being a wonderful place to live and entertain, you know, then you've cracked something really important. The good thing about them is that they're already considering that this should be more open plan. So they're starting to think about how that interior can work better for them. But I think there's a lot further we can push them. Yeah, I think we're going to have to push it further because actually a building like this, we're going to have to get every square inch to work as hard as it possibly can. I think it could be a really interesting case study about how to take the conventional suburban house and make it kind of amazing. <laughs> Thank you.
My worry about this is that Zoe sees the success of this interior as, you know, how many luxurious materials they can pour into it. And I wonder if there's another model we can suggest of, of giving them yeah. a wow factor that yeah. she so much wants. I don't think it needs to be luxurious at all. I think it needs to be fun and quirky. So Zoe needs to stop shopping and start designing. You know, people's, I suppose, in their desire to be different, they just rush out and start spending money, whereas actually she needs to hold back and come and see some really fantastic things and start planning this strategically. I've spent a long time in preparation for this, you know, uh, late nights staying at work, getting things finalised. It's really exciting, I say. It's, um, this week's really key for us. This accounts for about a third of the, the build, basically. Uh, so, yeah, I want this bit to go well. I was really determined to find a building that, that kind of transformed a suburban situation instead of just conforming to it in a way that Tom and Zoe have been forced to do. And this house, the Black House by Mole Architects, for me is a really great example of that. This amazing black cladding takes as its inspiration the farm buildings of the area, the industrial buildings. And for me, this building now acts as a kind of hinge point between the landscape and this suburban close. And it's a building that really, really does transform this from just ordinary suburbia into something quite different. This is just a really, really nice space, isn't it? What a lovely kitchen. These are regular IKEA units, which is the go-to kitchen for any architect's kitchen, I can tell you, um, but customised a little bit. Slightly different door handles, slightly different um, worktop here with laminated plywood. Nothing fancy about the materials. Some reconstituted plastic as a bit of a decorative feature here. Those things just make it look a bit different, a little bit sort of custom made, but basically the bones of it are the cheapest kitchen you can possibly buy. It doesn't matter how nice your kitchen cabinets are if you haven't made a beautiful space, and that's what this is. This is just plywood, slightly washed white, not painted opaque, but you can still see the, the wood underneath. I mean, in fact, it's incredibly cheap, incredibly straightforward way to, to, to cover a wall. What's really interesting here is that the architect has kind of opened up what is a fairly conventional envelope to, to give a sense of space. I think Tom and Zoe could do very similar things. They can open up bits of walls, allow it to borrow light from other spaces, which is exactly what's happening here. I've been really racking my brains as to what Zoe means when she says, I want the wow factor in my house. I think she wants something that isn't standard, it's not off the peg. The wow factor isn't about fancy materials, it's about allowing natural light in, it's about having a kind of openness. When you do sit there with your friends, you suddenly look around and think, wow, this just works, this is just right.
I'm looking side forward to, to meeting Piers today to see what his thoughts are initially on the house and um, seeing what he, he thinks that we could do to improve it as well. Yeah, can't wait to see what he can uh, offer us. Hi there. Hi Piers. Must be Tom. Yeah, how you doing? How are you doing? Good to meet you. Hi, Hi Zoe. Yeah. Hi. If there were no restrictions, what would you build here? If you didn't have to match this, what would you build? I think we might have changed the, the colour of the brick. Right. Um, yeah. Used a more uh, sort of handmade rustic mm. sort of, you know, uh, sort of reddish brick. Mm. Um, with the roof tiles, probably wouldn't have gone with like a, just a, a plain pan tile, maybe more of a plain tile. What about you, Zoe? What would you build? I think in this area, there's nothing flamboyant that you could build. It is kind of curious that actually if you, you know, with no restrictions, you know, it's interesting here that you would subtly change different brick, different tile, but actually, you know, you could build it out of, you could clad it in mirror, or you could clad it in lime green, polished, you know, cladding, or you could tile it. You could do something that was really about you, you know, you, you could make it yours, you know, you could do something that was kind of strikingly individual. We've got used to the fact that we have to have these bricks. Um, and like Tom said- Does that says, bother you though? It's rules as well, what's right and wrong. Mm. But it's still your home, you know, I don't think it has to be just anything. You know, have you got your mobile phone on? Show me your mobile phone. I mean, you know, <laughs> look at it, look at it. It's like the it's most vibrant. vibrant, zingy, <laughs> amazing thing. And yet here we are, you know, you're building something that's bigger than this. And yet you're saying, oh, it's just a home, I don't, who cares what it's like? So I think here that it's really, really interesting that, you know, you guys can make something as a kind of, you know, as a kind of flagship of how you can actually take something that is a very standard thing and make it amazing, make it unique, make it special. Okay, so let's go and have a look at the wow factor. Okay. So look, I mean, this space looks great. You know, I'd expect to see a wall, a wall here and a wall here, and three doors into your kitchen. Yeah. And you're not doing that? No. We just thought, why? Why do we need three doors into the yeah. kitchen? I mean, why can't you leave this open? Why, you know, why do you need to close that off? Being able to come in and not enter into a corridor, being able to enter into this space by being able to see through this would be fantastic. I think it makes a big difference to the way this space feels, being able to see into this. When we went to New York, when I was looking at the apartments we could stay in, there were some that were really sort of jumping out at us, and they were the ones with the exposed brickwork and the, the industrial sort of look as well. We thought about having it completely across there. Why couldn't you actually expose this, you know? If this is a New York loft, in all seriousness, you moved in here, you wouldn't put a ceiling in. You'd paint that and leave it. But it still has to feel uh, homely, mm. I guess. Yeah, it's difficult because we're looking at it from our own point of view, mm. but also trying to maintain the resale point of view as well. Yeah. We don't mind scaring off a few people because we've gone quite modern with it. So upstairs, you don't need this little single bedroom at the moment for a bedroom. You need it for your kind of office space, yeah. you know. You do end up getting confined with convention. We just grow up thinking, yes, you need that third bedroom as a selling point into the, to the house. You know, you could at the moment just even have a much more generous landing area, which could be your computer space or something, yeah. you know, rather than having to have a little bedroom. So arriving at the top of a kind of light-filled, spacious, you know, bit of the house rather than into a, a little corridor with doors off it would be much nicer. 
you know, don't put a door in and don't put a full height wall here. So you could build a wall up to this height, but leave this open. Yeah. And, you know, in future, if your estate agent tells you that this needs to be a bedroom, then you can complete this wall and put a door in. But for the moment, I mean, I think you should leave it as open plan as possible up here. to this house in London. It's called the Hidden House. OK, so here we are. First thoughts? Some bits I like, some bits I don't. The lines are what we're looking for, yeah. I think. It's not a dissimilar size to your main living space here. No, no. They're used to thinking about buildings as quite ordinary things, where you choose one front door over another or one lamp over another. This whole vision of the way of living is totally different. The whole ethos of this building is totally different. So I want to get them to realise that they really can do something that's very, very special. The thing to remember in this house is that all these materials are low cost. There's nothing other than just very sensible, straightforward, interesting ways of doing things. I really, really like this wall. I think it's really successful. I like the way that it makes this space seem bigger than it is. It allows them to incorporate domestic clutter and not hide it away. And I really like the way it forms this seating area at the end. That's beautiful. Yeah, I, 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 I could see us incorporating something like this in ours. Yeah. I, my concern is how can we fix it to the frame or how yeah. do we... But I'm sure there's a way we can get around that. But moving on to this bit, the other side of this, which is the kitchen, it's very, very cheap. Low-grade, industrial material that's lacquered. And this is very, very simple and affordable and very clean, really. I'm not a fan of the OSB, yeah. but it does actually look really good, even yeah. though I don't like the material. What about you, Zoe? What do you think? I'm quite surprised, I suppose. Mm. It, it really works, and I actually really I love that there. This is really cheap. I know you're not really big on OSB board. You could use, any, you could use metal, you could use anything to do this. But I really, really like the way it actually defines this whole seating zone. Otherwise, it's just a table and chairs floating around in this space. OK, so let's go upstairs. And the stairs is... It's very straightforward, but very, very simple. Very clean, again, no clutter. But you have a really interesting stairwell. And I think the most important thing is to keep it really simple through Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And use one colour, ideally, on everything and not have skirtings and all those sorts of things. It would probably be quite difficult not to have skirting. Yeah. Um, because of the detail of your stairs. Detail and Tommy. Um, he is, he likes traditional. Mm. Although he, he wants the house modern, there are traditional features that he's so used to. Yeah. The skirting yeah. boards and the architraves, mm. even the same colour, mm. may be a challenge and makes mm. the process... Maybe, maybe difficult. the way to do it is not to think about whether it's traditional or not. Don't talk about style, but just say, Tom, if you do that, it's going to make the whole house seem so much smaller than it actually is. Mm. And we've got to find a way to make it seem big and bright, and this is how we'll do it. I have tried that. <laughs> I have tried that. Tom's steeped in a background of building houses, and he thinks houses are ordinary things with pitched roofs and bricks and skirtings and architraves and carriage lamps outside. I am worried because I think it's the kind of beginnings of a kind of standard executive box, and actually it isn't going to transform it into something extraordinary.
I was doing this at about 11 o'clock last night, and now I'm doing it again tonight. When you're building your own house, it does consume you because there's a lot of decisions you need to make, um, and you start to live and breathe it. Sometimes things cost more, so it's just weighing up all of the, um, the advantages and disadvantages of everything you do. The project's always been about the wow factor, and when you walk in, it's something completely different from outside on the estate. The more that we move forward, the more it's a struggle to find the wow factors. Hi guys. Hi Piers. How are you doing? How you doing? Wow, look at this. Look at that. Wow. Gosh. It's work in progress. Looks great. So it really feels like a, a blank canvas now. Yeah. Tell us what you are going to do here. What, what, what's your plan for this, this room? We're going to leave it as it is. <laughs> Industrial look, you know. Yeah. Well, so. it, it kind of, you know, I, I mean, in some ways it wouldn't be too bad. I mean, my, my worry was that I was going to come in here and find um, br a brick slit wall up here. <laughs> <laughs> Which, is that, how, well, how, where are we with the brick slits? <laughs> we're, in all honesty, we're, we're back thinking about it because yeah. after all the other things that we saw, it still works. I worry that it'll make the room seem smaller than it is and it'll somehow kind of suck the life out of this place. I mean, it's, there's so much brick. They're a symbol of the past. At the moment, you know, you turn up and the house is still like the one next door and I think you need something really bold in here. And you could actually just use colour. You could paint the whole wall a glossy orange or something. What about making the whole wall look like a, like a waterfall or something? Do you have been to the Guinness factory yeah. in Ireland? Um, no. <laughs> How tacky is that? Done in a decent way. It's just, it oh, makes me, it makes me cringe. Zoe doesn't like it. What I want to show them is that there's a world of colour, texture and really interesting, bright and amazing things. I just want to find half a dozen things that may inspire them to do something out of the ordinary. How about kind of purple, a wall of purple panels like that? Do something like that. You know. That's quite interesting. <laughs> no, interesting. No, me too. Hate it. <laughs> Bark cloth. But it's actually. It looks like. It looks like suede. You'd have that in a jacket, wouldn't you? Yeah, I quite like this. <laughs> <laughs> so for your screen, next to your entrance, you I could like do that. that. I think Zoe left her own devices would go mad. With that wall, those studs are structural in a minute, so we'd have to try and work get yeah. something above them to support it. I just look at the aesthetic side of it, thinking, I like that, I want it. Tommy will You've say, got to make it no, work. you have to It's have just it got to work for building rigs, so, yeah. you know, as long as it does, then... Yeah. This will work for building rigs. I don't want them to settle for anything that's second or third best in this place, when it could be amazing. I think it's very beautiful, this. Uh, I like it. Good. Do you like it? You'd have to prove to me it works. Yeah. Something that really 
transforms that whole space, something really kind of bold and striking, I think you you do need. Yeah. You walk in and that would be, oh wow, what, yeah. what is that? Yeah, exactly. It would look amazing. Yeah. I'm not convinced on that one. Like, as it, you know, cost at the minute is five times more than we were looking at for that wall. I agree. Definitely. Because we're trying to do the build for under 100,000, you always have to think, do I really want that one or could I find something that looks like it but maybe be cheaper? And it's incredibly difficult to make a wow factor from your local high street DIY companies. It's very difficult. So it's quite disheartening sometimes after spending five hours, six hours trawling the internet for something cool and it just it just is to no avail because of the price. The first house that I ever lived in was an old farmhouse, so it was quirky, I suppose. Um, and then moving into a brand new house, it was just like everybody else's house and that's, that's what you get from them, I suppose. It was magnolia walls and I'm, I'm dying to get some colour into my life, really. They've got the house up. There it sits. It's not trying to stand out for itself. It's just trying to be part of this world. The more I walk around this house, the more worried you get that Tom and Zoe really haven't been able to push the boundaries. And we know they had limited resources and they had this existing planning permission. They've had quite a lot of constraints here, but you know, I'm worried that inside they're also going to have succumbed to the, to the idea of just becoming conservative because that's what gets things done quickly. Breaking this wall means that when you're sat in this space, you have a sense of something beyond. You're not, you're not confined. And that openness is, is really nice. We don't need these compartmentalised rooms and lobbies anymore because we have double glazed windows framed in plastic that keep drafts out. There's so many challenges here. I mean, I really hope Tom and Zoe don't have too much furniture, because to be honest, there's nothing you can fit in here. Barely a double bed, a couple of side tables, and maybe a wardrobe in this area here. I mean, you really have to live quite minimally, and maybe that's what they're going to have to embrace. As the house started to come together, as we started to look at you know dining room tables and, and sofas, so plumbing, electrics, carpentry, all of the main bits have been done now. So, how much of your kind of mental energy is spent on this place? So, you must do you think about it all the time? As soon as I wake up, I'm always thinking about the house. What can I achieve in this space? How can I achieve that for the minimal amount of money, but that will still look a luxurious finish? The only time when I don't think about it is when I'm at work because it, I, I just can't spare that time. I think Zoe's a really amazing person. She's young, she's really ambitious. She has all the right ideas and motivations about making a house for herself. You know, she, she sees it as an important kind of moment in her life to move into this place. And you just want the building to reflect that somehow. I and mean, from the outside now, I'm afraid it really doesn't. This could be anybody's house. The question is, what can they do on the inside that will really make it into theirs? We're at a small independent sheet metal supplier. 
And this is like a sweet shop packed full of extraordinary metal. And I often come to places like this to find materials to incorporate in my projects. So what I'm hoping to do today is to pull out a whole lot of interesting materials and just say, look, Tom, here it is. What do you think? These are actually free. They're just offcuts chucked in a bucket. And you can use these for all sorts of things. If you do want splashbacks in your kitchen or bathroom, you can use them. You can use them instead of tiles. You can use them uh, to cover doors with. Um, that's aluminium. It's, it has a coating on it that protects it from getting scratched and so on. This is steel checker plate, mild steel checker plate that is used for uh, things like submarine floors and stairwells in industrial buildings. I've often used this type of material in projects, in really actually high-end projects, and the people that you do it for don't know that this is actually a really low-grade material that is incredibly cheap. They just see something that's very beautiful, and actually, in the case of a kitchen, very practical because it lets the air circulate through it. mild steel that is zinc coated to protect it and the galvanizing has a really nice grain this is probably about 17 pounds a square meter or less and incredibly durable and incredibly quick to fix and looks fantastic it's very cheap this material you don't usually see it in houses but if you do, it's just so original, interesting, and good value. This stuff is very workable, so you could get it folded into a bench quite easily. And what I think you could do is use this at the top of the wall and at the bottom. Then this perforated metal here as a seat that wraps down this wall and folds out and becomes that bench. This is so easy, this stuff. This is all around the country, a little independent steel fabrication shops that have shelves full of this stuff. And you know, you get a sheet of this, stick it on your roof of your car, bring it back, and it needs no work. It doesn't need finishing, doesn't need pointing. This is really helpful. Yeah. Because being able to touch and feel it, yes. you know, it gives you a, be a better sense of how it's going to work in the room. And if we make it, it's yeah. going to be unique. It puts our stamp on the, yeah. um, on the house. I feel you've really understood that the way to doing a really inventive, unusual, low cost, and fantastic house is to improvise with these kind of materials. Yeah, we, we should be doing something like this. Fantastic. So. Now you are. Yes. I like the metal. Um, we started to look at it after the surface show, and obviously I'd only been looking online, so it's nice to, for peers to be able to bring stuff here and actually sort of touch and feel it. It's been a great help to us, certainly when I'm busy, busy during work. So it's nice that somebody else is there sort of helping us out, really. For me, this is incredibly exciting because I've seen a real transformation. I really feel we've turned a corner. I think they're going to do this. They get it. The big challenge for Tom and Zoe is how they carve beautiful, interesting spaces out of that completely standard exterior envelope. And the only way they're going to be able to do that is by opening up and allowing the spaces to connect and have views across and just take on many different functions at the same time. This addition was necessary basically because this was a family who unexpectedly grew. They had twins and needed a new room. Now, there was no chance, because this is an apartment, really, to, to extend outwards or upwards. So they sort of, in a way, have extended inwards. And that would normally be a big problem because subdividing flats is, you know, always leads to mean spaces. But here, because they kind of projected this piece out over the living space, you've got quite a cosy little living area and then this spectacular new room. So it's 
spatially ingenious, but it also has this incredible kind of playful creativity with decoration. Well, it's amazing little kind of cubby hole up here, really. Yeah. Enough room for a double bed, quite a lot of storage, wardrobe, some shelves here, and then a small desk area. It really is kind of, you know, cramming a lot into this tiny space. It sort of feels a bit like a very elaborate tree house or something like that. It's really, you sort of get a really nice feeling up here. There's a lot that's really clever about this space. You've got this kind of structure made of two sheets of plywood glued together and they form kind of structural ribs almost. Um, cut using a laser controlled by a computer. It's quite a recent technology. So all of this decoration, of course, you know, would have been incredibly expensive to achieve by hand. You, could, you couldn't have done it. But with a computer controlled machine, you can, you can do it relatively inexpensively. I think the lesson for Tom and Zoe is many folds from something like this. First of all, be ambitious. Just because you've got a standard interior doesn't mean you can't do something absolutely extraordinary if that's, if that's what you want. You don't have to have conventional rooms. There are sometimes other solutions. So I think yeah, that's really important for Tom and Zoe to think about. They've got this standard interior. How could they be ingenious and open up new views and new spaces they can really use? So the conventional house building model is to put a full ceiling in here and have um, a whole lot of space that is unusable up in the roof. Tom and Zoe sensibly have taken out that. But what I want to do is find a way of maximising this space because it's fine to take the ceiling out and they have a sense of space. But what about the actual tangible, physical, real space they can use? This is Zoe's getting ready room. This is the floor area. I think this is too small to have a double bed in it. If I was to draw on the usable space that's left once you've got a bed in, it's that. It isn't enough space. But actually, if you took the bed and put it up into the lofty space they've gained by taking out this ceiling, it will transform that room. I mean, for me, this is a funny space you need to shuffle around. Without the bed, it becomes a big, open, lofty space with an interesting and quirky bed. I don't think they're going to use this bed very often anyway. Occasionally, they'll have people to stay. And it just feels such an underutilised resource, that space up there. Every decision in this house has been quadrupled, checked and thought over. With every idea that you have, you always think, is it the safe option? Your mind automatically goes to, can we really do that? It's a bit out there. And you have to really remind yourself of what type of decor you're trying to achieve. All of these tiny pieces, to me, makes an incredible amount of difference. We could have had this with a rounded edge. We're going for square with everything. We've gone for square architrave and skirting board, so it made sense to have the square finish. Because if you've got just standard silver handles that every other new modern build has got, just it doesn't give it any character. So that's why it's taken, what, four to six months to just pick this one. When it's a whole house that you've built from scratch and you've had ideas before, and then those ideas keep changing and evolving, it can, it can be quite difficult to pinpoint exactly what you want. This wall, is not going to be brick slip and that was supposed to be the colour in here so we've had to uh, change our minds with what we want to do with it.
Not sure quite where he's going with this. <laughs> oh, I see. So move the bed up into a platform. That's interesting. The one hesitation that I have is that when you're walking into the room, the vaulted ceiling would be completely gone from your vision. So that's where I'm slightly hesitant to the idea. I love the pink ladder. I've drawn it, looks like it's going to work. All we're doing is just combining a few storage cupboards to make it look like it's a built-in feature wall rather than just a few shelves up. So if it looks good, you know, it could really set that room off. You know, we've spent so much time and effort on everything else, it'd be silly just to have something, you know, just at the last minute, just go, well, that'll do. So we're just trying to keep that effort going all the way through the project. These shelves? Yes. Can you buy just literally the shelf? No. No. So we're just taking the shelves from these and putting them into these holes. It will work. Theoretically, it will work. There you go. Lovely. I think that that's great for under £200. However, if it doesn't look as it should, I'm worried then we've just wasted £200. It could just ruin the whole look of the house in one hit, really, and that's, I think that that's my biggest fear. Wow, isn't this great? I can guarantee you right now that this is not the same as any of the other houses on your close, is it? I mean, this the idea that you've just opened all of this up and not divided it into a tiny dining room and a tiny lounge and a tiny kitchen, this feels like a generous, you know, open-plan, modern space. The first thing that strikes me is how big it feels. And actually, you've done that with really clever thinking by leaving things out. I remember when we went to the Hidden House, that's something that that building did very well. The Hidden House was probably the biggest inspiration we had when we went around to look at all the different things. We've just personalised it and just made it our own and just put our own twist on it. I thought with the feature wall that it would make it quite small, um, but in fact, it's given us so much more space. It's a really lovely size. I'm going to go look upstairs. This feels great. First thing that strikes me is how light and bright it all is. By taking things out, not only does it feel better and bigger, it's also cheaper. So within this staircase, there's an exercise in simplification. By taking away handrails and having more space, it feels a lot more generous, a lot bigger than it actually is. There isn't a flat ceiling above me making this room seem really oppressive. There isn't a door here. It's got this great hole in the wall which borrows light from that window down into the stairwell. So it all feels much bigger. None of these things that we're looking at have cost any more money. In fact, they save you money and they gain you space. So I think this would be more valuable than a conventional three-bed house.
So this is where you've really had some serious design input, both of you, isn't it? I mean, this, this wall. The colours came from when we went to the surface show. It makes it really vibrant, so when people come in, it looks fresh, it looks exciting, but just create that wow factor, but without the price tag. I can tell by touching it that this is a, a, another substitute. It's got the same look, it's more comfortable to touch, and actually that, that was only about 40 quid. Going to places like the Surface Show and, you know, just looking around at what other people have done, magazines, um, it's really down to your own sort of imagination and your own creativity as to what you can actually do with things. And the rest of it is quite understated. I mean, it's nice to have that mix, isn't it, between something that is a bit theatrical and is, is where all your ideas are, and then just let everything else be quite calm. It's great. And have you had any reaction from friends? Do they uh, go well when they walk in here like you wanted them to? Some comments that I've received have been, oh, I could never afford this. It's a beautiful house. And it's like, well, actually, you can achieve it. And it's phenomenal what you can do if you just put your mind to it. Let your imagination go. Tell me how much you spent on this kitchen, like how much did this cost? The kitchen was five and a half, I think. Right. If the kitchen cost five, five and a half grand, how much did your wall cost, do you reckon? Um, the wall cost, the unit's about 200 quid, paint 20 quid maybe. So, you know, 300 quid, say, for, for, to do that wall, that yeah. seems like pretty good value for the effect that you get. So for a while I was hung up on wanting to extend that platform over this space and use it to gain extra, extra usable space. You haven't done that. I love the idea of it, but the biggest factor for me is when you walk through the door, you see the big vaulted ceiling and get the, the airy space. Mm. And I just felt it would then take that away from it. I think you're absolutely right not to have done it. It, coming in here, this feels so spacious, and I think with that platform, however interesting it was, however useful it was, I think it would have cluttered up this space. So this wall, you haven't used metal that was probably £50 a square metre, you found your own metal paint. So probably again, for 15 quid, you've transformed that wall. Where did the ladder come from? Um, you can get these on an online auction for about £15, £20. Pounds. Wow, so 15 quid for that ladder and a bit of pink paint, and you've transformed this space? Yeah. You've taken a quite ordinary standard three-bedroom house and you've made an amazing environment that feels utterly different from any standard three-bedroom house I've ever been in. And I love the fact that you haven't hung the mirror, you've just put it on the floor, because, again, that feels lofty. Tell Tommy that. <laughs> he, he wanted he me wanted to... He wanted to hang it. He did. He was saying, oh, I can mount that. I was like, no, 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 I want it as a floor, a floor mirror, so... No, but it's, it works it's just, just as beautiful. it is. Yeah. yeah. This is really quite a spectacular finish. It must be really satisfying to see that sort of come off. Yeah, I, I think, to be honest, it costs us about £150 for just the tiles. It's well worth it. And, uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm really pleased with it, actually, how well it's actually come out. Um, but, yeah, the, the actual pattern is always designed. She actually sort of spent a good couple of days laying them all out. Have you got a different attitude to materials and building now than you did before? Um, I think, you know, the process of this build and what we've seen has, has opened eyes to you know, there's more out there than just what you can find in the local sort of hardware store or sort of me local merchant. So you and I have spoken a few times about this interior and, and have you succeeded in getting that wow factor that you've been looking for? Yes, just love it so much and what we've done inside, it doesn't feel like it should be a home. It feels like it should be a show home or some, somewhere that you're taking me to, to visit. So it's, it's quite a weird feeling really. When you think back to the houses you've lived in in your life, 
Does that make this house all the more special? This is really nice. Coming out of rented accommodation, this is my house. So it's, it's really nice to feel grounded here. And that's the, the one thing that I've absolutely loved about decorating the rooms, is that you can have your own colours, whatever you want. It's not just a building that we're, we're just making. It's now our home. And what about you and Tommy? Have, how, how has your relationship borne the strain of all of that? Um, I'm quite surprised we're still together. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it's more stressful than a wedding. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's, it's tough. Yeah, he's, he's done really well through this. The critical question for me, one of the ones I really want to know the answer to is, have you managed to build this house for less than £100,000? Yes, we have, yeah. I think we're... About 90. 90,000, that's really astonishing achievement for the space you've got. Yeah, yeah. The foundations and frame was about 40, something like that. And um, brickwork was about eight. And then the interior fit out was another sort of third. So about 30 grand for this interior. I mean, that's really astonishing. Some people spend that on their kitchen. I mean, that you've done a whole house for that. I mean, that's quite an achievement. I think it's been really tough. We've really been careful with how we've purchased items, which is the key to being able to spend that little amount on such amazing looking items. You know, you get out the house what you put into it, you know, and all the time and effort we've put in is we're now getting the rewards from it. Hello! Hi! Hello! <laughs> what do you think of your friend's house? Oh, uh, yes, amazing, yeah. What's great about this house is that it has the right type of wow factor. It isn't full of gimmicks and features. It's the whole space. When you can take a building like this and transform it into an environment this good, that has to be something we should be encouraging people to do up and down the country. They've rewritten the rules of what a suburban house can be. This so-called wow factor was not really about impressing their friends. It's actually her feeling like she's expressed her creativity in a way that leaves some of their personality in that house. There's a lot of stress and strain that goes into the build. Um, but, you know, it, it, it shows how strong you can be as a couple. And, uh, you know, I definitely recommend it to anybody. It's really overwhelming, actually, to be standing here now with it finished, living in it. It really makes me so proud of ourselves. You know, this has been my dream since I was probably about 16, to be as self-sufficient as I can. Just bring on your tat. <laughs> we'll make a house out of it. I mean, that nice house in Sheffield, <laughs> central heating would be wonderful. I just wonder how they're ever going to make any progress.